My name is Beatrice Bilò and I am the uh, chair of the National Allergy Society Committee. This year in Lisbon we have the opportunity to interview some presidents of the National Allergy Society Committee. And now it's a great pleasure for me to have uh, um, Dr. Adam Fox, uh, who is the president of the British Society for Allergy and Clinical Immunology. So, welcome. And as you know, uh, Dr. Fox, uh, the uh, National Allergy Society Committee is an interactive uh, platform aim aiming aimed at uh, uh, increase the um, interaction and the trust between the IACI and the National Allergy Society. So, how do you perceive this interaction? Well, firstly, thank you very much for um, giving me the opportunity to speak to you. Um, I think it's a really positive thing that we have this um, association between all the national societies. Um, you may have heard of something called Brexit, um, it's causing a lot of upset um, in the UK. So now more than ever, um, it's important that we remain part of Europe on every level that we can, that we take all the opportunities that we can to learn from other societies, to bring ourselves closer um, to IARCHI, um, because of course the needs of our patients, although they're different in different countries, there's so many common themes. For many years, many um, British allergists have been very involved in IARCHI and that's been a really good experience for them. They've been able to contribute to European-wide guidance Guidelines and the European wide guidelines have been really helpful for us at developing our practice in the UK. Of course, the other very important thing is that because of the um, relationship between IARCHI and the British Society, um, uh, British members of the BSACI are able to get very cheap membership of the European Academy. That gives them a better chance to be able to come to fantastic meetings like this. And we're very keen that that relationship grows closer, particularly because we're very excited about next year. Because next year, the, um, the European Academy Annual Congress is going to be in London um, and it's going to be a fantastic event. I'd like to speak a little bit about the specialty. Uh, in some countries, the full specialty of allergologies has not yet been recognized. So how is the situation in your country? So in the UK, we're on a, we're on a journey. It, it, we are recognized as a specialty, but there's some places where we're not always quite on, on, at the table in the same way that other specialties are. But I think that's starting to change. Um, there's been a lot of really high quality science that's come out of um, UK allergology, and I think that's also been raising our profile amongst the scientific community more broadly in the UK. So I think there is some recognition there. Um, we have some way to go in terms of providing for our patients as much as we'd like. There's still only a relatively small number of allergy specialists in the UK compared to other countries but I wouldn't want to detract from the fantastic work that is going on in the larger specialist centres because that's making a real contribution on, a, on an international scale um, to the practice of allergy. Um, could you tell us something about your society especially in terms of scientific activities? Well, I think we're a relatively small society. It's about um, 850 members, but we're growing rapidly. Over the last few years, what's changed is that a lot more paediatricians have started to become um, involved in the society. I think reflecting the increased burden of disease that we've seen in the UK amongst children. Um, I'm the first paediatrician to have been uh, elected as president, and I think that's um, a sign of the way that the, um, the society has evolved a little bit. Um, one of our principal activities is um, education. Um, we've just started to develop a national education education strategy to try and ensure that doctors at all level and also allied professionals, so nurses and dietitians, have allergy properly represented on their curriculum. So right from the beginning of their training they have a basic understanding of allergy because that hasn't been happening in the past and that's now really being reflected in the way that our family doctors um, just don't have the understanding of allergy that they need in order to manage it well in primary care. That's a, that's a big issue in the UK. Um, another area that we're very keen to be involved in is advocacy. So we believe there's um, a number of issues around the way, for example, that allergy is managed in schools. Um, the food labelling, for example, that's an area we've been very involved in. And over the last few months, we've had two um, very high profile, um, sad, very tragic deaths of children um, because of food allergy. Um, and that's really started to get a lot more media interest. So there's an opportunity at the moment for us to do all that we can to improve the quality of services, um, just uh, you know, areas that we can improve the life of people who have got um, allergy um, because people are paying attention at the moment. 
Yes, you have already uh, answered my last question because my last question was related to the allergy services, the allergy yeah. care, because uh, a very recent survey done by the National Allergy Society Committee and UAMS clearly shows that the um, spectrum of allergy services is very heterogeneous across Europe. Size, so yeah. how is the situation in your country? So it, obviously everywhere has a very different story. In, in, in the UK, within major centres, so in, in big cities, particularly in the southeast of the UK, we have really well-developed specialist allergy services. Um, across the rest of the UK, not so much. There's some excellent centres, but often they're having to work in, in quite difficult conditions of isolation because they don't have many other specialists around them. And that's something that we're very keen to develop, the networks of care that help support people's practice, especially if they're um, somewhere where there's not so many other, other specialists around but fortunately the UK is sort of small enough that we can do things um, together more effectively um, and that's something that, that the British Society is very keen to be supporting over the next few years. Okay. So uh, Dr Adam Fox many many thanks for being here for your time you. and uh, enjoy well, Lisbon meeting. Thank you and I look forward to seeing everybody in London next year. Yes of course we will see there.